Welcome to another Learning to Read drum lesson video. In this video, I'm going to explain how to play eighth notes that are connected to sixteenth notes with a beam. In order to do this lesson, you should already be comfortable with what an eighth note is and what a sixteenth note is. Also during this lesson, I'm going to be using and referencing the beat sheet called 816 Connection, and you can get that at OnlineDrummer.com. Make sure you have that printed out or whatever you want to do so that you can follow along with what I'm explaining. Take a look at number one, the first measure. The first note that you see has one beam touching it. And when there's one beam touching it, that is an eighth note. However, it's connected to two other notes, and those two notes have two beams touching them. And whenever there are two beams touching or connecting them, uh, that's a sixteenth note. So what we have is an eighth note connected to two sixteenth notes. The first two notes of measure one sound like this one and. They sound exactly like eighth notes. And remember that eighth notes were counted one and two and and then so on. So they're the same thing as having two eighth notes. One and. Starting right where we left off at the and with the second note and then the third note. The second note and the third note are sixteenth notes. And remember that you count sixteenth notes one e and a, two e and a, and then so on. Since it be the sixteenth note begins on the and, we have and a. Uh. So the second and third note are played and a. Uh. When you put the first three notes together, the first one and eighth note, the second two sixteenth notes, they sound like this, one and a. Uh. You can almost think of it like having two eighth notes where the second eighth note is doubled. So instead of one and, you double that second eighth note, one and a. Uh. I'm going to play the first measure through of number one for you. Ready? And a go, and a one, and a two. And a three, and a four, and a. Measure three of number one can be a little tricky. It's the same pattern, one, and a two, and a three, and a. However, you're alternating between the drum head and the rim. Make sure you're alternating sticks as well, right, left, right, left. So the sticking would be right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Let's play number one all the way through together. Ready, and a go, and one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and one, and a two, and a three, and a four. Repeat, start with the left. One, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. And one, and a two, and a three, and a four. The pattern changes on line number two. Take a look at the first measure, the first three notes. Now, instead of having the eighth note first, we have the two sixteenth notes first, and the eighth note follows. This pattern sounds like this. One E and. The pattern in the first line, you could have thought of as two eighth notes, and the second eighth note as a double. One and a. This one you can also think of two eighth notes, but the first one is doubled, one e and. When you put the first measure together, it's going to sound like this. Ready? And, go e and. One e and, two e and, three e and, four e and. Be careful with measure three of this line also. It's an alternating sticking pattern, and it looks and sounds like this. One e and, two e and, three e and, four and. Using alternating sticking is important because it helps to build coordination and it also avoids a dependency on either the right or the left hand. Let's play number two together. Ready and go e and one e and two e and three e and four e and one e and two e and three e and four e and one e and two e and three e and four and one e and two e and three e and Four. Start with the left. One e and two e and three e and four e and one e and two e and three e and four e and one e and two e and three e and four and one e and two e and three e and four. Look at measure one of line number three. The first pattern is the one and a. The second pattern on count two is the two e and. Then the three, three and a. And then the four, four e and. 
There is no pause between those. When you put that whole measure together, it's going to sound like this. One and a two E and three and a four E and. Let's play number three together. Be careful at the end, uh, at the repeat. What happens is the last count or the last note of measure four ends with the left stick. And when you repeat, you also have to start it with your left stick. So you're going to have two lefts in a row. Let's give it a try. Ready? And a go E and one. And a two E and three. And a four E and one. And a two E and three. And a four E and one. And a two E and three. And a four E and one. And a two E and three. And a four E and one. And a two E and three. And a four E and one. And a two E and three. And a four E and one. And a two E and three. And a four E and one and a two E and three and a four E and. Line number four mixes things up a little bit by throwing in some eighth notes, some eighth rests, and also the pattern from line number one and the pattern from line number two. Measure one slowly sounds like this. One E and two and three and four and. Count four is an eighth rest and the and of four has an eighth note. So you rest on four, and then you play on the and. Four, and. Measure two sounds like this. One, E, and. Two, E, and. Three, and. Four, and. Notice that three, and were accented, and we also had the eighth rest on count four and the eighth note on the and. Measure three is the same pattern from line number two. Measure four sounds like this. One, and, a, two, E, and. Three, and. Four, and. Let's play line number four together. I've slowed the tempo down a little bit because there are a lot of changes and a lot of things going on. Make sure you're always looking ahead to the next note so you know what's coming. Ready, and, go, E, and. One, E, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. One, E, and, two, E, and, three, and, four, and. One, E, and, two, E, and, three, E, and, four, E, and, one, and a two E and three and four. Repeat. One E and two and three and four. And one E and two E and three and four. And one E and two E and three E and four E and one. And a two E and three and four and. Line number five adds some of that alternating sticking between the rim and the drum head, so be careful that you do alternate sticks right, left, right, left. Let's try number five through also at that slower tempo. Ready, and go, E, and a one, E, and a two, and a three, E, and four. One, E, and a two, and a three, E, and four, and one, E, and two, and three, E, and four. Four, one and two and three e and four and one e and a two and a three e and four one e and a two and a three e and four and one e and two and three e and four one and two and three e and four and Line number six also has some tricky patterns between the drum head and the rim. Just make sure you're looking ahead so you're not surprised as to what comes up. Let's play number six through at the slower tempo. Ready, and, go, E, and, one, and, two, E, and, three, and, a, four, E, and, one, E, and, a, two, E, and, three, and, a, four, and, one, E, and, two, E, and, a, three, E, and, four, E, and, a, one, Two and three E and four and one and two E and three and a four E and one E and a two E and three and a four and one E and two E and a three E and four E and a one two and three E and four and and that's how to play eighth notes connected to sixteenth notes with the beam. I hope that you found this lesson useful. Keep drumming.